What have officials told you about the investigation? Well, it started at 7.30 in Lakeland, Ebeth, of last night when a woman notified police there to say that her 26-year-old daughter, Elizabeth Ray Hamilton, had been missing from her job. Police in Lakeland believed it was possible her ex-boyfriend, Brett Lee Curtis, may have kidnapped her. Now, 3 o'clock this morning in South Daytona, police spotted his vehicle there. They tried to stop him, but then they say uh, the driver of the car fired several shots at officers before getting onto Interstate 9. And pursuing a chase into Brevard County. Once the vehicle was in Brevard County, deputies here put stop sticks down on the roadways, successfully stopping that vehicle. And we can show you pictures of the white Nissan Altima that was involved in this chase. I can also tell you once the vehicle did stop, uh, the woman in the vehicle was able to get out. She ran to safety here at the rest stop, and deputies uh, took her into safe harbor while her the driver she was with actually committed suicide in his vehicle along Interstate 95. Uh, that woman's family issuing a statement today thanking law enforcement for her safe return. However, police have not yet confirmed that the man who committed suicide was in fact the victim's ex-boyfriend. Reporting on scene from Brevard County, I'm Natalie Tolomeo, News 13. And Natalie, multiple agencies helped to the rescue, but it took them quite a bit to get all those folks down. About two and a half hours, Kelly, you're right. And about five and a half minutes ago, live here on News 13, you actually saw some of the, and we're seeing right now, some of the very first test runs that workers here at Universal are going through this morning as they work to figure out what exactly was that technical glitch that caused the Hollywood Rip Ride rocket to malfunction last night. Happened around 7 o'clock. There were 12 passengers on board the roller coaster when it happened. And uh, one of those was actually a child. The roller coaster was doing its thing. It, it got to the top. It stopped like it was supposed to, but then it never restarted. So everyone on the ride was stuck again for about two and a half hours, and they were about 140 feet off of the ground. Orlando and Orange County Fire Rescue teams were out here. They do training for these types of situations. So uh, those guys, those women, they were definitely prepared. They were actually um, up at the top with those riders. They put them into harnesses and then and, uh, they were able to safely walk off all 12 of those passengers. One was taken to the hospital for uh, some main minor neck and back pain. But this is not the first time that the Hollywood Rip Ride rocket has had its problems here at Universal. You know, it opened in 2009. About a year later, they shut it down for more than a month because the manufacturer actually issued out a warning that there was some possible danger with a part of this ride. And then just this year, a couple months ago in August, the ride was closed as workers tried to figure out why a passenger was injured on the roller coaster. Kelly. All right, Natalie, uh, let's talk about what you mentioned earlier uh, there in your report about the ride is actually moving. Can we get a closer shot to see if a uh, ride rocket is actually moving right now? Yeah, so it looks like, Natalie, they may be trying to test the ride a little bit there, maybe. Exactly. Obviously, you know, we're, we're too far away to speak to any of the workers there, but they've been doing some test runs. It looks like we've seen them go up and down, do some loops. There's one right there going down uh, right now here live just on the tracks right there. And that's kind of in the area in which this roller coaster last night decided to stop. But, you know, we've seen some workers up at the very top. Again, it's about 140 feet and it that right there. That's where the roller coaster kind of stopped yesterday, but going down smoothly here this morning. So the question is, how many more test runs will they go through to determine that that technical malfunction is no more? They've worked it out. And will the Hollywood Rip Ride Rocket reopen in a few hours when the park does? That's the question everyone wants to know. So stay with News 13 for more on that. For now, we're live outside of Universal in Orlando. I'm Natalie Tolomeo, News 13. For the first time, you're looking at the Central Florida Metro SWAT team in action. Operating for more than a year now, Apopka, Winter Garden, Maitland, and Winter Park police officers are gearing up on the streets of their cities as one. Hostage situations, barricaded suspects. Uh, we do a lot together already of uh, search warrants for drug search warrants. 17 SWAT officers from Apopka, 13 from Winter Park, 12 of Maitland's finest, and three from Winter Garden. Shooting drills, physical fitness tests on a challenging obstacle course, special ops, all united and ready 
for a call at any time. We as chiefs weren't sure how it was going to come together, but as the guys got together and started working together, uh, all the barriers came down and uh, they enjoy it now. Winter Gardens Police Department is adding more officers in October, a first for the department, which has never had a SWAT team until now. For an agency my size to try and equip suddenly 20 people, it would be really cost prohibitive, so it's easier to go in now in small steps. And the Central Florida Metro SWAT team is keeping thousands of dollars in the pockets of taxpayers together, sharing and buying new equipment. To have an armored personnel carrier, it's about a $250,000 piece of equipment. It would absolutely be cost prohibitive for each one of our respective departments to go out and spend a million dollars buying four armored personnel carriers. The SWAT team is divided into the east and west regions. Uh, Popka and Winter Garden are paired up. Winter Park is with Maitland, but when the need is there, SWAT members from all four PDs will spring into action wherever they're needed. Natalie Tolomeo, News 13. Looking through the eyes of the officer, this Sanford cop chases a suspect taking him down, and it's all caught on this camera. You're actually getting a first-person view of what the officer's seeing. It's at the eye level of where the officer is. So when I turn my head like such, it's getting what I'm seeing. Officer Michael Timpano was first to try out the new cams. He wears one during his entire shift, and so did 20 other SPD officers. Last December, the agency purchased the equipment for $40,000, and the eye cams have been so useful, Sanford police have ordered more. I've had instances where I've gotten burglars in progress with it coming out the back door. You can testify to it, but showing that happening to a jury is just compelling. But the cameras aren't just locking up criminals. Officer Timbrano says they're an added sense of security when he's wearing his badge. Some people say the worst things cops can face are bad guys with guns or good guys with cell phones. So this would clear you and if there were any allegations that came across you. That's correct. I mean, if my actions were justified, the camera will show my actions were justified. <laughs> Stuff happens in a split second, we have to make a split second decision because it's either life or death. And it's going to show that our actions were done justifiably or within good intentions because we were in fact in fear of the public safety or our safety in fact.